about the spider hunter. You know, we've been setting the stage for today's video. Knowing what we now know so far about this feather-legged orb-weaving spider, you have to begin to ask some questions. For example, we know that this spider does not produce a sticky orb web, like almost every other orb spider does. Two, it doesn't have any venom glands nor any venom. So it doesn't inject venom into its prey to subdue it. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, how does this girl catch her prey? Does she use this web at all? And then we must also ask the question, if it does use the web, how is this accomplished? And then finally you have to ask this question, what is different about the anatomy of this spider that allows it to accomplish the two questions we've just asked? Hey, we're gonna find out. And you'll find out that this spider is absolutely ama- No, I promised, I guess I wouldn't use the word amazing. Um, let's just say, prepare yourself to have your mind Okay, we have our questions. Now let's go and find our answers. Let's go. spider here, in my opinion, is one of the most amazing and unique spiders I have ever seen. And I'm thankful I came upon one uh, just in the last year. And uh, that's what we've been looking at for the last several videos. There's some super unique things about this spider we're going to take a look at that defy what we know about the realm of spiders. Uh, unique things just for this spider and this family of spiders that make it so amazingly able to capture its prey without the use of venom because it has no venom glands, has no venom to inject in prey. But it has a unique way to make webbing that it doesn't use sticky material to capture its prey. Before we begin a study of the webbing of this feather-legged spider, I want you to just sit back, listen to some relaxing music, and watch this spider in action. Just observe, uh, if you will, the manners, the movements of this spider, and then we'll come back and we'll, we'll talk more about its webbing and the spider itself. So, enjoy.
Now, as we look back at some of these scenes you've just looked at, there's times when the spider looks like it is sliding or gliding across its own orb web on invisible strands of webbing. Then there's the view you get to look and see the feathered parts of the leg. You remember we talked about the feathered legs? You can see those uh, on those two front legs, the feathered section. And then, most importantly, what this video is going to deal with is this making of this special web that this spider does. The spider itself is called a hackled orb weaver. Well, I had to look up what the word hackled even meant. Hackled is to be combed out or brushed out. That's one of the terms that it's used for. Now, I want us to go back and take a look at this process that this is the only spider that does this. And as the video you've just taken a look at, you've seen something there because this spider was in the process of working its orb web over with heckled webbing. Now, we're gonna take a step back and see what this heckled webbing is all about. I've watched hundreds of spiders build their webs and weave their webs because I enjoy looking at behaviors of spiders and I have never, ever seen a spider make this kind of motion, this kind of behavior. And I just had to know what in the world was it doing and why was it doing it? Let's find out right now. You know, this technique that this spider uses to make its webbing, it reminded me of the old cotton gin mills. Now, what the spider does is like reverse process from what the cotton gin, the old cotton gin mills used to do. It would use combs, bristled combs, to pull out the seed and separate that from the cotton fibers, the, co the cotton ball fibers. Uh, this spider, already produces amazing, fine, tiny fiber of silk webbing. And to demonstrate what the heckling process looks like, I brought in here to show you a piece of white thread. Actually, it's yarn. And I also have my toothbrush, electric. Okay, so I got a brush, or like I'm gonna use this to illustrate the comb that's on the spider's hind legs kind of looks like the top of the toothbrush with its bristles. Um, and I'm going to show you what happens when the spider does this hackling technique. So here is the yarn, and I'm going to run my electric toothbrush up and down the strands of this yarn. And watch what happens to the yarn fibers. I'm going to bring the toothbrush up and just stroke it on the yarn. Now I know it's going to be hard for you to see, but I'll show you the finished product in just a moment because it doesn't take very long at all to do this. I'm running the toothbrush up and down the yarn and it is, it is combing it, if you will, or what's called hackling it. And I'll turn this off. And I'll show you up close what our result is. As you can see, the hackled yarn, or the rapid combing of the yarn, has produced all kinds of stray fibers, smaller fibers, finer fibers, along the length of the yarn that we have hackled. 
And this is exactly what this feather-legged orb weaver does when it takes its own fine strand of silk webbing and it takes it across the combs found on its two hind legs and rapidly moves that comb and the hackling takes place just like you saw with the yarn and it produces extra fine tiny fibers that come off of that fine piece of webbing. Now why would it do that? And what does it, what does it accomplish when it does that? All right, let's take a look at that. We've all seen and used Velcro. Velcro is the material that has all kinds of little fibers on one side of the, whatever the tape is that you're using or equipment. And on the other side, there's little hooks or barbs, loops, if you will. Hook end here, fiber end here. Push the hook end with the fiber end, and you got a nice seal of tightness that it sticks together, and it makes it really hard to even pull it apart. Velcro. That's kind of what happens when this spider does its hackling on its own thin piece of web. It creates all kinds of little tiny loops and strands that are used in a way that's really cool. When it weaves its orb web, it leaves plenty of gaps in the webbing so that an insect can fly into the web, crawl into the web, whatever, fall into the web. And if it sticks an antenna or a leg through one of these little gaps, all these tiny little fibers, like Velcro, grab onto, thing, grab onto the insect's body, which is usually covered. Legs are covered with little bristles and hairs, or its, it's a head may have antenna, and it gets caught up in the little loops of fibers and <laughs> holds that insect tight like Velcro would. That's kind of how that spider works with a dry webbing material, no sticky material used, to capture its prey. Now it's got to move kind of quickly once the insect gets entangled because there's nothing to really hold it there but the entanglement of the insect. And once the insect moves around, the more it moves, the more stuck it gets. So that's how this spider captures its prey. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Be sure you come on back because our next episode's going to deal with even some more um, uh, fascinating things. Maybe even, you can say, electrifying. <laughs> uh, we're going to come back and take a look at this spider again and its web-making techniques and discover something so unique, so crazy, you'll have a hard time getting your mind around it. Hey, thanks for being here. Have yourself a great day. We'll catch you next time.